Um, I am from National Geographic, and I'm really, really happy to be here. This is my first time here, and it has already been a really magical experience. And I wanted to share some more of that with you. Uh, I am passionate about photography and passionate about storytelling. I'm most passionate about when those two come together to make a difference. And we're going to look at some work today. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to talk about that. But that's really what we're here for over the next three days, figuring out how to make a difference, how to make a change, how to inspire people to take incredible action. So National Geographic last year celebrated its 125th anniversary. Um, I have not been working there that long. But um, there are some people I work with who have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and for that 125 years, most of that time, the bulk of our storytelling has been done with visuals, with pictures, with maps. Um, we show you the world. We take you places that you have never been. So to start, I want to share a little bit of that history with you quickly, because we don't have a lot of time. Um, and then we can talk about the future. So that's who we have been. Um, who we are going to be is, I think, a little different. Uh, we talk about National Geographic and we think about the magazine, but what we are is a creator of content. We're a publisher. We deliver that to your doorstep or into your mailbox once a month, which was kind of cool for a while. Um, but we live in a world now that does things a lot faster, and, and we have to be faster. The other thing that we do is we live in a world that is connected, it's networked. We communicate faster, we communicate over further distances, and we communicate in real time to solve problems. Photography can inspire, but what we've discovered at National Geographic is that we have to inspire not once a month, but we have to inspire every day. And one of the key elements of being able to aspire every day is to build a community. That's what our world is about today. It's about being able to extend the power of community beyond our borders, beyond where we live, and into the lives of other people. So there are a few things that we're working on at National Geographic, which we are, by the way, a nonprofit. Um, so some of these things are things that you may be trying to do too. Utilize the power of storytelling. Utilize the power of photography to inspire and to do good work. So one of the things we created was a photo blog. I know, that's revolutionary. Nobody's ever built a blog before. It took us millions of dollars and many years to kind of come up with this idea. Um, but we did, because we're in Washington, and that's what we do. We spend money to come up with basic ideas. Um, but the goal was not so much to create something revolutionary, but to evolve how we told stories, evolve how we got people involved with our photography, and how people got involved with each other. So we started telling stories more frequently, um, with greater depth. We started telling the stories behind the stories, the goal being to connect our readers and the new word, our community, together with us on a more frequent basis. We made it possible for people to go into the field with us in real time, to take them on a field trip. Not to lecture, not to tell them what to do or not to do, 
but to let them experience it for themselves and to make up their own minds. So the concept of community is starting for us to extend to how we do our storytelling, how we talk about the world, how we share the world with people. So the other thing that we really understood that we needed to do was not just talk about community, but actually build community. So we created something called Your Shot. I didn't come up with a name. <laughs> but the goal of the Your Shot community was to invite everybody who loves National Geographic, who loves photography, into our process. We wanted your shot. We wanted your pictures. We wanted you to become part of our storytelling, our visual community. For us, this is a revolutionary idea. It's a paradigm shift. We're taking our publishing tools out of our hands and putting them in yours. And we're saying, you create the pictures, you create the stories, we'll publish them, we'll put them in front of people, we'll help those stories make a difference. So our community has responded. These are some of their pictures. We have over 500,000 people who upload photographs to National Geographic. Those pictures are looked at by editors, not like every third picture or every fifth picture, but every month, all 200,000 pictures, which translates into about 7,000 pictures a day. The editor who looks at these pictures every day never gets up from her desk. <laughs> we bring her food. <laughs> She's very dedicated. <laughs> and I'm just hoping she doesn't find another job anytime soon. <laughs> but the point of her dedication and, and what we're trying to do is to allow our community to learn from us and to teach us. So they teach us to the tune of Three and a half million favorites, comments, thoughts shared with us a month. That's a lot. Um, for National Geographic, this is our most dedicated community. For those of you who understand kind of the crazy numerology that is web metrics, 90% of the activity on our website takes place in this community, which is huge. And what do these people do? They upload photos, but they also do assignments. They do assignments for people like Feeding America. They do assignments for people like Smile Train. They do assignments for people like Photocombi in Haiti. So not only are we creating a community, we're allowing a community to activate and become stronger and more powerful than any of us could be. They work together, and they're working together to do good. And they take some pretty cool images, too. So on this journey of discovery and on this journey of storytelling, um, you have to talk about the photographers who work for National Geographic. Uh, they are some of the most committed, um, some of the most dedicated people that I know. Many of them work for organizations like Human Rights Watch, MSF, Open Society, and Marcus Bleasdale being one who works for the Enough Project, trying to rid the world of conflict minerals. Marcus is somebody whose work has made a difference. And he has somebody who um, has created change. And rather than tell you about it myself, um, I'll let Marcus do that.
For a lot of photographers, the photograph is kind of the ultimate goal. But for me, it's the start of the process. Once we have this picture, where can we take it? Who can we show it to? How can we make the horror that we see in these pictures stop? It's not the individual photograph, it's what you do with it and who you engage with it that makes it powerful. Historically within DIC, we've had more than 20 years of war that have been centered around the access to natural resources that we in the West use every day, whether we use them in our mobile phones or whether we use them in computers. We're part of these wars. We create these wars due to the demands that we have within our own societies. The reason photography is an essential tool in this message is that sometimes there is no way to communicate about that 12-year-old child soldier better than me putting his life right in front of you, me putting him on your kitchen table or on your computer screen so that you can see this young boy 12 years old with a Kalashnikov on his back, cycling down a road who can't even touch the pedals of the bike that he's stolen at gunpoint. All of these little details you, you can only get with a photograph. You can only get by engaging with that image. You can only see the youthfulness of his face contrasted by this gun that he's pointing at you through the photograph. That you only get with this medium. And that's why it's so important, because without that shock, without that engagement, without that initial anger that starts at that point when you turn a page and you see that image of that child holding a gun, when actually he should be playing soccer with your child, who's 11, he shouldn't be walking around with a Kalashnikov. And I want all these people that see these images on their kitchen table or on their computer to be as angry as I am when I'm taking them. I want them to ask and scream for change when they see these images. And that can only happen, I think, with a photograph. So Marcus's work, along with the work of, of many other people has led to change. It has led companies like Intel and Apple and many others to question where their minerals are coming from, to say that they will no longer ignore the realities of war and suffering, and to understand that they are part of a global community that needs to care for each other that needs to work together, that needs to change. The power of the photograph, the power of the still image, is something that we all can harness. So I'd like to end on this quote because it becomes less and less true the more time passes. We're all living in the future. <laughs> I know that's a shock, but we are all living in the future. Um, and the future is the difference between today and tomorrow, the difference between being connected uh, and not. The difference between being able to take a photograph and beam it halfway around the world in a nanosecond and have that photograph impact change. The world that we live in allows us to be in many places at once. It allows us to speak in multiple tongues. And it allows us to share heavy burdens with multiple hands. So that's the power of the world we live in, and the power of photographs. To tell stories helps that change the world. So the challenge I want to leave you with today 
is one that I think you should view as an investment in your mission, an investment in your ability to inspire, an investment in your ability to affect change. I'd like you to embrace the power of visual storytelling, embrace the power of photography to do your work. I'd like you to tell the challenging stories that matter, and I'd like you to inspire your organizations and the people that they serve to change the world. Thank you.